Uh, thank you. The next item of business is a statement by Kevin Stewart, the busy minister, on ending homelessness to, uh, together, actions recommended by the Homelessness and Rough Sleeping Action Group. The minister will take questions at the end of his statement, so there should be no interventions and interruptions. I call on uh, the minister uh, to make his statement. Ten minutes, please, Mr Stewart. Uh, thank you, President Officer, and thank you for the opportunity to set out our ambitions, ambitious plans uh, for ending homelessness in Scotland uh, following the work of the Homelessness and Rough Sleeping Action Group. Everyone uh, needs a safe, warm, settled place they can call home. Uh, home is more than a physical place to live. It's where we have roots and a sense of belonging. Home gives us our sense of well-being and it's the starting point for how we interact with our community and the wider world. It is not acceptable in a country like Scotland uh, for people to be rough sleeping or spending extended periods of time in temporary accommodation. Uh, we know that the impacts of homelessness on people is devastating, uh, a fact brought home with the publication of a study into the links between health and homelessness last week, showing poorer outcomes across the board uh, for, for people who have experience uh, of homelessness. Uh, and that is why uh, the First Minister established the Homelessness and Rough Sleeping Action Group in September last year to recommend the actions and solutions needed to eradicate rough sleeping, transform the use of temporary accommodation and end homelessness for good in Scotland. Everybody uh, found to be homeless in Scotland is entitled to settled housing uh, and most people are provided with it. Uh, there has been a 39% fall in homelessness applications since 2008-9, and that is largely due to the innovative and person-centred approach on prevention happening at a local level. Yet, still too many people struggle to access the accommodation and the services that they need. Uh, and we need to change how we uh, look at homelessness as a nation. Homelessness is not about fault. It is not something that individuals choose to become. Uh, and that is why we must do more to ensure that our system works for those who are most vulnerable, uh, recognizing the importance of tackling homelessness as a core part of doing right by everyone in our society. I believe that we can end homelessness in Scotland. Uh, there will always be those who require emergency housing and support as life life's challenging uh, events are, are, th are thrown at us, but I want to see a homelessness system uh, that makes the experience as brief and as simple as possible. Uh, the system itself should provide a safety net for people when they need it in their lives, in times of hardship and crisis, but which also supports them to move on and thrive as quickly as possible. Uh, the Homelessness and Rough Sleeping Action Group uh, rose to the challenge that we set them. In November, uh, we received their first set of recommendations in addressing rough sleeping over the winter. Uh, these were implemented with £328,000 worth of investment uh, from the Scottish Government and also from Action Group members. Uh, this enabled targeted support for people sleeping rough and helped to get them off the streets and keep them safe during challenging times over one of our coldest winters ever. This was followed in March by the Action Group's recommendations on how to end rough sleeping for good. Recommendations on the transformation of temporary accommodation uh, were submitted in May, and today uh, saw the publication of the fourth and final set of recommendations uh, setting out how to end homelessness altogether. Uh, the group have worked at a remarkable pace while still involving and engaging many others in addition to their regular meetings and significant amounts of work undertaken in between. In just nine months, they have produced four reports covering 70 recommendations, which focus relentlessly on making improvements for people threatened with or experiencing homelessness. Uh, we have accepted, in principle, all the recommendations in the direct control of the Scottish Government. And in those areas where there are actions for others, for example, councils or UK government, uh, we will urge them to act and, march and match our commitments. In particular, 
Uh, the six final recommendations made on the funding of temporary accommodation will be developed further in partnership with local authorities. In addition, through Glasgow Homeless Network's I We Can programme, the action group engaged with people who have first-hand experience of homelessness. Uh, they know what it's like to navigate the homelessness system and can therefore see where the barriers are. And I cannot emphasise enough how important I regard this work. Uh, I wish to uh, express my heartfelt thanks and appreciation uh, to John Sparks as chair of the group and to every member of the group for their commitment, dedication and hard work. And I know that some members of HARSAG are in the gallery today. It is clear uh, that shared vision of each member of the group to end homelessness and their commitment to social justice, very much shared by us in the Scottish Government, was absolutely crucial uh, to working uh, with such pace and clarity. Uh, and the context for the 70 detailed recommendations is a vision of a whole system approach uh, where prevention of homelessness is paramount, where the responsibility lies not just with the local authorities, uh, but with all parts of the public sector. Uh, where homelessness does occur, uh, rapid rehousing should be the default position, avoiding the need for temporary accommodation. Uh, and recognising that some people need more than just a house and have multiple and often complex needs, that must be addressed alongside their homelessness. Uh, the Action Group have been very clear uh, that the Housing First model of intensive support uh, should be available in these cases. Uh, for those that do require the emergency safety net of temporary accommodation, their time should be as short as possible. Um, it should be spent in accommodation, which is of a high standard, and in a location uh, that minimises disruption to their daily lives. Earlier today, President Officer, I confirmed government's acceptance of the final set of recommendations. And these set out actions to end homelessness altogether and address the wider risk factors for homelessness, including poverty, social security and migration policy. This morning, I also announced a significant allocation of £21 million from the £50 million Ending Homelessness Together Fund uh, to support that transition to rapid rehousing and housing first. Uh, this includes a £1.5 million contribution over two years from the health funding made available this year for addiction services demonstrating our commitment to joint working at a strategic level and to working across portfolios. Uh, I'm pleased to say we have already begun the work required uh, to take the recommendations of the Action Group forward. Uh, the, homelessness and prevention, the Homelessness Prevention and Strategy Group, uh, which I co-chair uh, alongside COSLA spokesperson, uh, Councillor Alina Whittam, uh, will oversee the development of the implementation plan for not only the Action Group's recommendations, but also those from the Local Government and Communities Committee's report on homelessness. Uh, President Officer, local authorities are already carrying out excellent work across Scotland to prevent and tackle homelessness. We, along with local government, the third sector and wider public sector partners, have been working hard to prevent homelessness in Scotland over many years. And I pass on my sincere thanks uh, to all of them for their work. All of this, of course, is being done in, face, in the face of the UK government's programme of welfare changes, uh, which is making life harder uh, for so many people across our country. Uh, and by the end of this decade, uh, an annual £4 billion in benefit cuts uh, will uh, come out of Scotland, pushing people into debt, rent arrears, use the uses of food banks, and will push folk, more folk into crisis. And whilst we are spending a record £125 million this year on welfare mitigation to protect those on low incomes, much of which is mitigating uh, the awful bedroom tax, we need to be vigilant uh, about these uh, situations. We know from reports such as the National Audit Office uh, and crisis reports, to name a few, uh, they, that they've pointed to the devastating impact that these welfare cuts are having, which is leading to more homelessness, and that is predicted uh, to rise uh, despite our efforts to mitigate the impact. 
It's vital, therefore, that we continue to work in partnership with all local authorities and we continue our engagement with the housing options hubs, as this has been a key to embedding a preventative approach to homelessness. Can we end homelessness in Scotland? Aye, we can. But it's important we get it right and bed in change and improvement for the long term. Uh, we need to make the most of the current opportunity and ensure all parts of the public and third sector are aligned in their aims and activities. Uh, we need to develop a system that helps those who need it most wherever they are. I'm proud to say that where homelessness does occur, Scotland already has some of the strongest house housing rights for homeless people in the world. Uh, we have strong foundations and thanks to the Action Group, a compelling and positive vision for the future. And I look forward to working towards ending homelessness and rough sleeping for good in our country. Thank you, President Officer. Thank you. The Minister will now take questions on the issues raised in his statement. I will allow around 20 minutes for questions, after which we have to move on to the next item of business. Can I ask members who wish to ask a question to press their buttons, press to speak buttons now? I call firstly on Graeme Simpson. Mr Simpson, please. Thank you. Um, can I thank the Minister for advance sight of what turned out to be a particularly woolly statement? Um, and can I also congratulate him on keeping his job? Um, He's committed to accepting the recommendations of the uh, action group in principle, and yet he said little in detail today about what he means by this. There's nothing concrete in this statement, no bricks and mortar to help the homeless. Now, I agree with the minister that we can end homelessness, but we need more than warm words. So can I ask some specific questions? Harsag has spoken in the past about housing first, the phrase doesn't appear in today's recommendations, so I'm assuming that rapid rehousing is the same thing. Can the Minister say in detail how he plans to roll out Housing First across Scotland? Where, how many units and at what cost? And can I ask about another area, Recommendation, recommendation 6, um, which deals with uh, people constituting the highest proportion uh, uh, getting into rough sleeping. The report talks about people leaving public institutions and those with previous experience of those institutions, such as prison, mental health service, services, and the armed forces. And that's particularly important given that the number of homeless applicants formerly in the armed services in Scotland increased by 11% in the last year. Does the minister have any specific announcements which would help these most vulnerable people? Thank you, Minister. Um, President Officer, a 10-minute um, statement to Parliament does not give you the opportunity to respond uh, to all 70 recommendations that have been put forward by uh, HARSAG. Um, but I think that one of the things that Mr Simpson should recognise is that today I announced £21 million worth of funding uh, to allow for rapid rehousing uh, and uh, Housing First uh, to be rolled out um, in specific areas first and then across the country. Uh, and beyond that, we have brought together funding from other portfolios uh, to make sure um, that uh, those folks who have addiction problems are, are dealt with in an appropriate manner and that that funding um, follows uh, the person itself. Um, and as Mr Simpson is well aware, um, I have had uh, numerous meetings with colleagues right across the government um, and uh, with stakeholders right across the country uh, to make sure that we get our approach absolutely right in this. Um, and that does mean uh, getting service prov provision aligned. And he talked about um, folks who were um, leaving public institutions. He will know um, that uh, we currently have the care review going on. And I want to make sure uh, that everyone who leaves care um, is uh, given the appropriate opportunity um, to access housing. Uh, we are all corporate parents uh, and we have a duty uh, as we do to our own children, nephews and nieces, uh, to make sure that we get this right. And beyond that, in terms of uh, public institutions, um, he will be aware um, that in terms of the Scottish Prison Service, uh, the shore standards have now been put in place just recently, in November uh, last year, if I remember rightly, to get it right for those uh, leaving um, prison. Uh, Mr uh, uh, Simpson talks of bricks and mortar, uh, and we need more bricks and mortar. 
Well, that's why this government is investing £3 billion uh, to deliver 50,000 affordable homes, 35,000 of those for social rent uh, during the course of this parliament. Uh, this is the biggest housing programme uh, for decades, certainly the biggest housing programme uh, since devolution. If Mr Simpson wants to persuade uh, his colleagues at the Treasury uh, to release the purse strings uh, to allow for more capital spend in Scotland, um, I'm sure that I could oblige him by spending a little bit more. Pauline McNeill, please. On behalf of Labour, I would like to thank the working group chaired by John Sparks for the incredible work that they have done on tackling homelessness. Homelessness is a real crisis in our society witnessed every day on the streets of Scotland. The Minister didn't mention that it's the fourth year in a row that the number of children living in temporary accommodation has risen by 9%. And those families spent an average of 2,004 days. I would like the Minister's assurance that those children and families will be a priority, given the current government have had a decade so far to deal with this. Rough sleeping on our streets is on the rise. People are dying on our streets. And homelessness is a matter for some every 18 minutes. In fact, applications are up 1%, uh, contrary to what the statement the Minister has outlined says. Does the Minister agree that tackling homelessness must be an integral part of the poverty agenda and it must become a priority for public health? The significant rise in those with mental health issues losing their tendencies tells us that it's more than bricks and mortars. Will the Minister tell me today to what extent is he planning to have discussions with the new Cabinet Secretary for Health to make sure that those views are represented at the Cabinet table. And finally, in a recent Unison research, um, it showed that 69% of council workers identified that the lack of frontline staff is a key issue in bringing those services together. Will the Minister outline exactly what resources he will ensure that local government services have to deliver homelessness services? The £21 million is welcome. But how no, is you must conclude the rest you're well of the recommendations time. are complete. Thank, thank you, you Minister. Um, I thank uh, Ms McNeill for her questions. And uh, while um, homelessness applications have fallen by 39% in the past decade, it is unfortunate that there has been that 1% rise. And I share um, her belief uh, that no um, uh, children uh, should be sleeping in unsuitable uh, temporary accommodation and that's one of the reasons why I've already reduced uh, the time that can be spent in unsuitable uh, temporary accommodation from 14 days to seven days for families uh, and for pregnant women um, and uh, I do not want to see anyone uh, in uh, unsuitable temp temporary accommodation. Uh, we have to uh, remember, though, that 80% of uh, families with children are in mainstream housing as temporary accommodation. I want to drive uh, that percentage uh, much higher. And obviously, uh, I will have to cooperate with local authority partners uh, to ensure that we make some real differences there. I think it would be fair to say um, that many local authorities are, are doing very well in this regard. Uh, there are one or two um, that need to do a, a huge amount more uh, in that regard. In terms of the intertwining um, of homelessness and other services, um, this is, homelessness is not just about housing. It is absolutely vital, vital uh, that we ensure that services are aligned uh, to ensure that people um, themselves are supported within their homes. And that's why um, uh, I've had already uh, discussions with uh, ministerial colleagues from across portfolios, including in public health and mental health, as Ms McNeill outlined, um, uh, around about their commitment uh, to driving forward the change that is required. Um, and I will continue to do so with new ministerial colleagues as well. Uh, Ms McNeill can be assured of that. Uh, Ms, Ms McNeill asked about the £21 million specifically. Um, the £21 million is for that transformational change to allow the investment to move to rapid rehousing uh, and housing first uh, in a number of areas. She asked about the future. Uh, well, we've seen um, in Liverpool, um, with their Housing First pilot there, the analysis by Crisis says that after a point, uh, the use of Housing First actually becomes cost neutral. 
Um, and, you know, I think uh, we uh, could do uh, more to, to, to learn about these uh, examples of that. And I'm sure uh, that Ms McNeil uh, would be happy if I sent her further detail or, or around about that. I intend to go elsewhere during the course of the summer uh, to see how they have done uh, and to, to test um, uh, some of these things that have been said. Now, I understand when the two front benches ask questions, we have longer answers, we have longer questions, but I now have 10 minutes and 11 questioners. You can do the arithmetic. I want to try to get through everything, so I'm going to ask for short questions and short answers, please. I call first Bob Doris, followed by Michelle Ballantyne. Um, President Officer, uh, I welcome one of the substantial recommendations in the report to reform the funding system for temporary accommodation, often high cost and low quality. That would include the devolution of housing benefit and greater support for those who are homeless. Can I therefore ask the Scottish Government how it will map out with COSLA how that would work in practice and when you intend making representation to the Scottish Government, so the UK Government rather, in relation to this Minister, matter? Minister. Um, President, uh, President Officer, um, I think that I want to ensure uh, that we understand, fully understand, uh, the overall impact of those uh, six recommendations uh, around about tem temporary accommodation and uh, the finances of that. Um, I've uh, agreed already to work in partnership with COSLA uh, to gather uh, robust financial data uh, from local authorities uh, and officials will be working over the course of this summer, President Officer, uh, to gather that intelligence that will allow us to make an informed decision uh, about the consequences of funding uh, being devolved. Um, I can assure Parliament that I will keep them up to date on all of this and I'd like to thank COSLA very much um, for um, their uh, full cooperation uh, in all of this as we move forward. Michelle Ballantyne, followed by Kenneth Gibson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, noting your statement that you accept in principle all the recommendations and you'll take forward any in your power, I want to turn you to recommendation three. Many of the organisations of organisations I've met with, whilst in principle agree no, with the recommendation... No, please just get to the question. I'm sorry. Please well, get to the, the question. This is the question. Expressed a number of concerns about how this will be delivered, both financially in terms of housing stock. Does the Minister have any costings for this recommendation, and does he have any concerns about meeting this challenge? And, Minister, can I have a short answer, please? Um, I can find recommendation three. It's not at my fingertips at this moment. Uh, but what I can say to uh, Ms Ballantyne is that in all uh, that we do, uh, we will continue to talk to stakeholders to ensure uh, that we can implement um, these uh, recommendations. Some of this is not going to be easy, um, but what I would say uh, is in terms of our partners in local government, um, in housing associations, uh, in the third sector, uh, and right across that stakeholder gr group, they are up for this. Now is the time uh, to take the action uh, to achieve our ambition uh, to end rough sleeping and end homelessness in Scotland. And we will report back to par Parliament as we progress. Uh, and I know uh, without a doubt uh, that there will be further scrutiny uh, from the Local Government and Communities Committee. And I look forward to that. Kenneth Gibson, followed by Kezia Dugdale. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I welcome this statement. I'd like to ask uh, what specific uh, focus will the Scottish Government give uh, to women who have been made homeless as a result of domestic violence? Minister. Um, President Officer, uh, this is one of the uh, things uh, that uh, has affected me the most. I met a, a group of women from Fife who put together um, a, a, a really immense report about the uh, situations that they faced, um, where they, uh, rather than the perpetrator of the crimes against them, uh, were the ones who were being punished. I think that we uh, need to have a look uh, at the legislation uh, that we have in place at this moment and see if we can improve uh, on all of that um, because I think that some of the things which are currently happening um, are unacceptable. Uh, the Homelessness and uh, 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 Prevention and Strategy Group, which I co-chair, uh, will look at all of the recommendations and will scrutinise uh, the action plan and drive that forward. And I know that there are a number of folk around that table uh, who will be uh, looking very closely 
um, at the situation uh, that women and families who uh, face domestic abuse have gone through and how we can improve their situation in the future. Kezia Dugdale, followed by Andy Whiteman. Officer, there are 560 more children in temporary accommodation than there were last year. And I have one constituent who is living in the most horrendous circumstances just now with an 18-month-year-old baby. Given that 70% of all unsuitable accommodation breaches were in Edinburgh, can I ask the Housing Minister what direct conversations he's had with the leadership of the Council to address this scandal in our capital city? Minister. I regularly meet with uh, councillors uh, from across the country and I met the housing convener um, from Edinburgh uh, just this morning um, at the um, uh, launch of the um, uh, last set of recommendations. I've made it quite clear um, to local authorities that it is unacceptable uh, to breach the unauthorised uh, time limits. Uh, and I will continue to drive uh, that forward. I know uh, that Edinburgh are working at this moment with their own uh, action group, um, which is cross-party support. Um, and I know that uh, uh, significantly uh, a number of uh, the members of that group are the leaders of their groups on that council. Uh, and I hope with, uh, with their help, uh, that we can see uh, real change here in Edinburgh. Uh, we are investing heavily um, in housing here in Edinburgh, uh, but one of the things which we also need to do is look at allocation. And while the allocation policy of the council, I think, um, is right uh, in terms of, I think, 73% of allocations going to homeless people, uh, I would say that uh, housing associations here in the capital city could do better uh, in that regard. Um, and I know uh, that Councillor um, uh, Campbell um, will, will uh, be talking to them in the very near future to ask for additional support and help from them. Uh, and uh, she has that support from me. Andy Whiteman, followed by Alec Cole Hamilton. I thank you, Presiding Officer. I welcome Minister's statement. Given that tenants can be evicted via Schedule 3 of the Private Housing Tenancy Scotland Act 2016, if their landlord or creditor intends to sell the property or if the landlord wishes to use the property for a purpose other than providing someone with a home, such as renting out as a short-term let, does the Minister agree that private rented sector tenants need greater security than they currently have? Minister. Um, President Officer, as Mr Whiteman knows, uh, since I took office, uh, we have provided greater security uh, for private sector uh, tenants. Um, and I will continue uh, to look at uh, the private sector rented situation uh, and see uh, what more we can do. Uh, I'm always willing to talk to Mr Whiteman uh, around about some of these issues and if he wants to come and speak to me further about it, uh, I'm happy to meet with him. Alec Cole Hamilton, followed by Gail Ross. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Recommendation 5 covers a provision for emergency accommodation for those migrant homeless population without recourse to public funds. Does the Minister recognise there's a particular group within that um, of women with insecure immigration status who are fleeing domestic abuse situations, often with children, supported by groups like Shakti in our nation's capital? Does he accept that generic provision of emergency accommodation for that group may be unsuitable? And will he look uh, to providing a bespoke solution for these women? Thank you. Minister. Um, I think there are some difficulties uh, around me giving a commitment to that here today because uh, of the nonsenses around about legislation uh, on no recourse to public funds. I think it would be much better if we joined as a parliament uh, to say that the no recourse to public funds policies of the UK government are unacceptable and that they should remove them. Uh, I have talked to the UK Hou Housing and Homelessness Minister um, around about these issues. Uh, she uh, has said, Ms Wheeler has said that she is determined, presiding officer, uh, to, to move forward in eradicating homelessness south of the border. I think one of the greatest challenges that we have here uh, in eradicating rough sleeping um, and uh, homelessness here in Scotland is the no recourse to public funds um, situation. Uh, we've also had discussions with COSLA. Um, my officials have had discussions with COSLA uh, and we are working our way through to see exactly what we can or cannot do in that regard. I expect uh, that to report, uh, them to report back soon uh, on these issues. Beyond that, um, my colleagues um, uh, in government have written to numerous ministers, uh, UK ministers, uh, asking them uh, to get rid of this policy, which is having a real impact on, on many people uh, who uh, we welcomed here uh, and we sh who we should be continuing to support. Gail Ross, followed by Jeremy Balfour. How can the work of the Homelessness and Rough Sleeping Action Group, alongside the government's pre-existing work with local authorities, 
help highlight and tackle rural homelessness? Um, Minister. Uh, President officer, although uh, a huge amount of the focus um, is always uh, on urban areas, um, I want to ensure uh, that all areas uh, of our country benefit from our strong homelessness uh, rights um, and that they have the same opportunities as those living um, in cities. Uh, rightly, each local authority uh, works to its own local conte context um, and that is recognised by the action group. But the focus should be on the prevention of homelessness through uh, person-centred housing options approaches. Um, and all 32 local authorities are involved in the housing options hubs, which promote and develop best practice to improve these services. Um, if uh, Ms Ross has specific um, uh, problems in uh, Caithness and Sutherland, I would be keen to hear about them um, because I think that while we have heard uh, voices from rural Scotland, uh, we could be doing with a few more of those voices being heard. Uh, four questioners I'd like to get in, so there must be crisp questions and short answers, please, so everybody gets their shot. Mr Balfour, you set the, you set the bar. Uh, thank you, uh, Deputy uh, President Officer. Uh, so, so by in Edinburgh have committed 800 homes for Housing First. To support those individuals will cost at a minimum of £6 million a year. Will the Minister ensure that the Scottish Government underwrites local authorities' commitments to house and support recipients of housing support services for as long as they need it? Thank you, Minister. Uh, one of the things is that at this moment in time, local authorities are res uh, responsible for homelessness and they are spending uh, homelessness budgets. And for example, Glasgow, their budget is some £70 million a year. What we are doing is ensuring uh, that we put in place uh, monies which can transform services. It's absolutely vital uh, that we do this. And as I said earlier, um, evidence shows that after implementation uh, of Housing First, uh, costs are, are, are cost neutral. Um, so we will support uh, not only local authorities, uh, but Social Bite um, and others uh, in terms of making sure that we get this right. But I also expect local authorities to use their current budgets uh, the best way that they possibly can to ensure that we move away from spending on uh, unsuitable temporary accommodation, which we spend a lot of in certain cities uh, like Edinburgh, and focusing uh, that money on delivering uh, for people in their own tenancies. Ruth McGuire, followed by Jackie Bailey. Thank you. Can I ask the Minister for further detail on how the £21 million will be used to ensure that change is implemented both quickly and at scale? Minister. Um, as Ms McGuire says, we're uh, making up to £21 million of the Ending Homelessness Together Fund available uh, to help councils and partners develop Housing First locally. Uh, we will work closely uh, with them to ensure the funding leads to necessary change and to understand more about how we can ensure Housing First programmes are sustainable alongside the work, wider work of housing services in every local authority in Scotland. Uh, we'll also work with local authorities as they develop uh, their rapid rehousing transition plans by the end of the year. Jackie Bailey, followed by Gordon MacDonald. Labour provided £36 million to end rough sleeping in the first parliament. The Scottish Government has so far provided £328,000. How much more will be allocated specifically to tackle rough sleeping and what action will he take to improve the measurement of rough sleeping? Minister. Um, I, I would say that uh, we have put the £50 million ending homelessness together fund. Um, in terms of rough sleeping, this winter we provided £328,000, as Ms Bailey knows. Uh, but it's not all about money, um, because one of the things which uh, was uh, wrapped up in that £328,000 uh, was uh, personal budgeting, giving folk on the front line the flexibility uh, to uh, provide uh, th for the needs of people that they came across in the streets. That budget was £50,000, £25,000 for Edinburgh, £25,000 for Glasgow. Um, in fact, uh, the budget itself, uh, they only spent £17,000, uh, but made a huge difference uh, to rough sleepers in both of those cities. Uh, we will continue to look um, at these changes in terms of delivery, um, many of which have worked. Uh, there will be full published analysis uh, of that spend in the very near future, and I'm sure that uh, members will want to look at that very closely indeed. Gordon MacDonald, briefly, please. 
What is the Minister's view on the key recommendations the Action Group have made that could mark a real step change in eradicating rough sleeping and reducing homelessness? Um, I think one of the, um, the key uh, things um, is uh, getting housing first absolutely right uh, and making sure that we don't just give people houses, uh, we give them the support that they require, that each individual uh, requires. That is the key uh, to all of this. Now, there is commitment uh, in terms of uh, my officials. There is commitment from local government partners. There is commitment right across um, the third sector. And there is commitment uh, from all of this government to make this work. And I think together uh, we can realise our ambition of ending rough sleeping and ending homelessness in our country. Thank you. I'm sorry to rush you, but I've actually had to overrun by eight minutes to get you all in. So just to let you know, these are really, we must have crisp questions and answers. This can't always happen. I'm going to give a slight break as the front bench changes over for the next debate, but be very brief.